Be attentive to the gospel of life and salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded by the evangelist Mark. Jesus says, truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they, have, they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his claws became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were all terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. قال الرب يسوع الحق أقول لكم إن بعضا من القائمين هنا لن يذوقوا الموت حتى يروا ملكوت الله وقد أتى بقوة. وبعد ستة أيام أخذ يسوع بطرس ويعقوب ويوحنا وصعد بهم وحدهم إلى جبل عال على انفراد وتجلى أمامهم وصارت ثيابه ناصعة حتى لا يعجز أي قصار على الأرض أن يبيض مثلها وترأى لهم إليا مع موسى وكانا يتكلمان مع يسوع فقال بطرس ليسوع ربي حسن لنا أن نكون هنا فلننصب ثلاث مظال لك واحدة ولموسى واحدة ولإليا واحدة ولم يكن يدري ماذا يقول لأن الخوف اعتراهم وظهرت غمامة تظللهم وجاء صوت من الغمامة يقول هذا ابني الحبيب فله اسمع حقا والأمان لجميعكم المسيح يسوع التسبيح Beloved brothers and sisters, we offer this divine liturgy on this blessed feast for the soul of Yusuf Abud and his wife Wadad. Al-Raha al-Abadiyya a'atihima ya Rabb. Fal-tastarih nafsuhuma bis-salam. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Well, happy feast of the Transfiguration. You know, 
Today, the church celebrates the feast of the presence of Jesus on the mountain with two of his disciples. So they were not on the top of the mountain. And as the, the text says, that Jesus was transfigured. So Jesus was saying before, before this uh, event happened, Jesus was telling his disciples, all of them, that there are some of you will never taste death until they have seen the kingdom of God coming with power. So with power, which means there is something special. So six days after what he said, he took his disciples, Peter, and went on the top of the mountain and he was transfigured there. You know, Jesus asked his disciples before this event, who do people say that I am? And they started answering him. Still remember this. Uh, so Peter told him, you're the son of the living God. After this, this um, uh, event, Jesus tells his disciples, you, you say that I am the son of, of God. That's true. But I am going to suffer and die for you. So Peter told him, no, Lord, they will never, this will never happen. God forbid, this will never happen. And Jesus tells him, walk behind me, Satan. Don't think like people think. Think like God thinks. So after this, he took them to the mountain. And there he transfigured. They saw Jesus in his real glory. While they were on the, on the, on the mountain, you know, it was an amazing view to see all, like, this glory the same thing when you come to the church. You are witnessing the glory of God. Unfortunately, your eyes may not see anything, but your faith can see clearly. While they were talking, like, where they were like looking at this beautiful view, Peter liked it. So he wanted to stay up on the top of the mountain. So that's why he says to, to Jesus, Please, Lord, let us be, build tents and stay here forever. It's amazing to leave everything and stay here on the top of the mountain. I love what I'm experiencing. So what he saw is part of heaven on earth. When you come to the church, you feel the same thing. I don't know why not everyone does, but this is the truth. We are living with the glory of God now. So... May I ask you another time, please, um, Jacob? You know, Jacob is a seminarian, for those who do not know. And he's going to become a priest, like, very soon. I think in three years, right? So, please. I want to ask, like, Jacob, I want his, let's say, his personal experience. Like, excuse me, but like Peter, what happened with him, he left everything. He doesn't want to go back to real life. He loved to stay with the Lord forever. And you are now a guy, you left everything in the world and you want to stay with him. So what makes you really love the Lord this much as Peter, you don't want to leave the church, you want to become a priest. Like, tell us about your experience, please. Yeah, my answer is love and peace and light. In, in, the, in the prayer that we had right before the, the, the readings, may our minds be enlightened by your love and peace and light. And these are three things that I've experienced so strongly in Jesus, and I want other people to experience them too. Really just having all good things come from God. And uh, I was searching for a while. I, I was not practicing the faith for like several years of my life, my late teens and early 20s. Uh, but really finding that peace in Christ, that peace that only Jesus Christ can give, that the world can't offer, that really made all the difference to me. And his truth and his light and his love. That's why that line, it, it just, it hit my heart just now. I'm, I'm not even making this up. Just now, when I read that line right before the, the reading, I was like, oh wow, that's exactly what I'm thinking about of, of why I, I, lo I love Jesus and I want to serve him in the church. So, you know, there's real life at the end of the day and there are temptation, many things. And you know, Peter didn't want to go back, but Jesus had another plan. He told, he told them, let's go down. So let's go down to real life. There is like passion. Are you, there's like this 
Elim, do we so call them passion, the passion of Christ? So are you, excuse me if I'm asking you this in front of people, but do you think that you are afraid of life or you can face them with the one who can give you power? Like, how, how do you see like, because it's not easy to become a priest, trust me. And I want everyone to know like, what do you, how do you th see these things? Like how is your life with temptation and God is with you? I think one of the surest signs that Jesus is present in our life and acting in our lives and helping us are those moments that you can't do them on your own. Like you're, you might be scared, you might be anxious, you might be nervous about it. Pray to Jesus, Lord, please be with me and guide me through this moment. That happened to me a lot um, actually in like social situations as I was discerning the apostolic priesthood. Because as a priest, you're very social. You're with people a lot of the time. Um, and to be honest with you, I had some doubts about that. When I was, I wanted to serve the church, I was like this phase of returning to the faith and like feeling a call, hearing a call. But like, I can't, I can't be talking to people all the time. I'm kind of, I'm kind of shy. I'm kind of, you know, nervous around people. Um, but there were just so many times that I would go into these situations, like social situations, and then be kind of nervous, but then they would, they would just, they would end up going so well. What was all of my, my doubts and my worries would just vanish into smoke and I would look back on them and then I realized that's because that wasn't me. That was Jesus. That was Jesus carrying me and being with me. Bravo. Well, if you don't mind, my last question, if you, if you really don't mind, like ask them this minute, since it's his last Sunday with us. So we all know that you were born in Montana and you moved to Maine. Like those two places are kind of like more nature than we have people. Like, you know, it's a big state, <laughs> both of them. So Peter was kind of in Maine or Montana in this, excuse me, in, in, in this text, kind of. Yeah. So do you think that nature helped you pray? And how do you invite people to pray in their in the nature? Uh, yes, that's very true. I, I'm a total, total, I was a mountain man. I still am. I, I love nature. I have hiking, backpacking, the outdoors. Um, even when I was in my searching days, I, I always found peace in nature. Um, and I would be walking in the woods, and I, I wouldn't feel, you know, lonely or alone. Like I felt kind of just like like a presence. And it wasn't until later that I realized that presence was Christ. Nature is such a perfect and beautiful place to encounter our Lord um, because it's peaceful uh and it's quiet and it's in it's and it's created by god all of all of nature the trees the mountains the streams they all reflect god they have his thumbprint his fingerprint on them just in the way that you can tell oh that painting is is by rembrandt because it has his style nature is the style of god so i i honestly and seriously from the bottom of my heart invite all of you to this is a beautiful Pennsylvania is beautiful your area is wonderful there's so many nice places out here just go for a little walk go go spend some time in nature maybe with your family your loved one maybe by yourself and just before you go just offer it up to our Lord and say Lord may I walk with you may I share this time with you and please reveal yourself to me in some way um, it might be something subtle because he speaks in, in silence but Maybe just the gentle breeze blowing through the leaves or the reflection of the sun on the water. Uh, these all are just little glimmers and glimpses of the glory and the majesty of God that Peter, James, and John saw on Mount Tabor. We're all invited to see this. Uh, and I think nature is a wonderful place to do it. So go, take a hike, go for a walk and experience God in nature. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Abuna. I personally think that Jacob would be, will be a good preacher one day. That's what, I, what I, I, I think. I'm pretty sure of that. So thank you once again. Say amen. Amen. In the name of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, 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 العيشة مع الله بحد ذاتها هي مجد بس نكون عم نرد قدوس 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 عم نحضر حلا للحظة فيها مجد بدنا نشوف الله بعد شوي في جملة كتير حلوة أنا بعتبرها واحدة من الروائع بالقداس منقول 
السماء والارض واو برافو السماء والارض مملؤتان من مجدك العظيم اذا السماء والارض مليانين من مجد الله وانا ما عم شوفون حق امين كل حق علي انا لا سبب احب ايه سالوا الله يا رب اظهر لي مجدك خلينا نشوف مجدك يا رب اذا بدنا نغير كلمه مجدك شو فينا نحط كلمتين محله محبتك كلمة كثير حلوة إذا بنغير كلمة المجد فينا نقول جمال الله خليني شوف جمالك يا رب مثل ما كان عم بيقول جيكب من شوي خلونا نمجد الله حتى لو كنا بالطبيعة عم نمشي نمجد الله على جماله هون نمجد الله على أولادنا نمجد الله على أهلنا نمجد الله على بلادنا أحبائي ربنا بده يظهر مجده من خلال كل شخص ولكن بده طاقة يطل من خلالها على العالم افتحوا قلوبكم خلي تكون هي هالطاقة الله يستعملها خليكم تكونوا منبر الله يستعمله تيحكي من خلالكم الله محتاج لسان خلوا يكون يستعمل لساناتكم خلوا ربنا يستعمل عيونكم بده عينان الله بده اجرام تيمشي تيروح يزور العالم خلوا يستعمل اجرايكم الله بده قلوب طيبة الله بده قلوب طيبة افتحوا قلوبكم خلوا الله يستعمل قلبكم العالم ساعتها بيشوفوا مجد الله من خلالكم كثير هينة بس قولوا له للرب طلعني قديس ختاما احبائي بكل زمن ربنا بيتكارم علينا بقديس بكل جيل الله بيبعث لنا قديس اي متى بيصير في حاجه للقديس بس العالم يكون بأقصى وأسوأ درجات الأخلاق للأسف الشديد عم نشوف حنا بأسوأ وأوسخ فترة بالتاريخ بالأخلاق العامة العالم ما بعرف لوين بدها توصل ما بعرف لوين العالم بدها توصل ما حدا عايش بحاله الرجال بدها تعمل نسوان والنسوان بدها تعمل الرجال والواحد ما عارف حاله أشوه مرة بيقول أنا حس حالي بسينة أنا مرة حس حالي ضبع تنجينا يا رب العالم ما انا راضي بحاله وصلنا لمستوى صوره الحريه مدمره الحريه صوره بدل ما تكون لخير الانسان صوره لشره لهالسبب احب إيه؟ اتوقع انه بهيك ظروف الله بيبعث قديسين اللي بيطلبوا منكم حضروا اولادكم يمكن من بيتكم يطلع القديس حضروا قلوبكم ممكن انتم تكونوا قديسين بس افتحوا ايدي قولوا لي يا رب وسط جيل ملتو وكافر خلينا نضيء كالنيرات في هذا العالم، هذا كلام مربولس مش كلامه. خلينا نضوي يا رب مثل النجوم بالسماء. خلوا ربنا يستعملكم، خليكم محافظين على اخلاقكم المسيحيه، لانه اذا بدنا نكمل مثل اخلاق العالم حتما رايحين على الدمار، حتما. رجاءنا احبائي افتحوا قلوبكم تطلعوا قديسين. قولوا نشكر الله